couple years ago, Cisco released a new remote office solution. So if you think about the way that we've typically done remote office solutions, it's either been a VPN client on a machine, or maybe we put a firewall or a router out there and we do an IPsec VPN connection back to some head-end concentrator somewhere. What this new solution is, is, is leveraging your wireless LAN controller in the DMZ to terminate access points. And what we do is a DTLS tunnel between the access point and the controller across the internet. It's very simple, it's very easy to set up, it doesn't take a lot of time, and I'll show you guys a complete walkthrough on what that is. So first, let's talk about the access points. You can use any access point that you want, like a 2700 or maybe a 3700 series access point. But Cisco, at the same time that they released this new technology, we also released a couple new access points with some features that a home user might want. So for example, the first one released was this 600 series access point. And this one has a couple ports on the back. And these ports can also be tunneled through that DTLS connection all the way back to headquarters. Why would I want to do that? Well, let's say I've got a phone on my desk. It needs to be PoE powered. I can plug this thing in, power the phone. Connection goes all the way back to headquarters and I'm on the network. The other thing that these things can do is they can have a local SSID. So a home user can actually use this as their router. They can get rid of their Linksys or their Netgear router, plug their internet connection in directly to this. They could have their home side and then they could have their corporate side on here. And I'll show you guys how to set, set these things up. Since we've released the 600 series, um, we've this is a little bit older now, we've came out with the 700 series, we also had the 1810, that's the one that I have in my hands here, this is one that I'm gonna actually be using to set this up. And the newest version that's out is the 1815. So before we get started, a couple things to note here, um, architecture-wise, so we recommend putting the controller obviously in your DMZ. Um, it's nice to have a dedicated controller for this. And again, it doesn't have to be a, a big one for only terminating uh, 50 APs or 100 APs. You can go with a smaller controller. Have it in your DMZ. Um, you can either give your interfaces on your controller uh, a public IP address, or we can NAT to the controller. And I'll show you how to set up the NAT scenario because that's what I have uh, going here in my house. And there's two important things we do that you need to forward two ports if you're going to NAT it. So they're UDP ports, 5246 and 5247. So you need to make sure you have that set up to the IP address of your controller's management, um, AP manager interface for this to work. So guys, let's get into it and I'll show you how to control it and configure it. Okay, so let's get into the configuration now. First thing you want to do is take your access points out of the box, plug them in just like any normal access point that you would do. They're going to boot, they're going to go into local mode, they're going to associate to the controller just like any other access point would. We're going to do a couple things on the controller first and then I'll show you guys how to set the access points up for the office extend mode. So the first thing that we want to take a look at is we want to make sure we have the DTLS license installed on our controller. To do that, head over to management. You're going to select software activation, licenses, and then this is where you can see all the licenses you have installed. And data encryption license, that's the one that we're talking about right there. Um, I have it already installed in my box. If you don't have it in here, it is a free license. You need to go to cisco.com forward slash go forward slash licenses or license and you can download it from there. I'll put the link in the description of this video so you guys have access to it. If you don't have it, go there. You will need to go to the tool and put in some information. Where you find that information is from controller, inventory, and it's going to ask for the UDI information here. Um, it's going to ask for the product identifier and it's also going to ask for the serial number. Once you put those in there, it's going to spit out this the, the DTLS license for you. Next, we're going to go in and we're going to create our WLANs. So these are this is the SSID that's going to be broadcasted out at the user's house or the small office. To do that, we're going to go to the top here, click on WLANs, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a new one. Say go. And you know what name do you want? So this is going to be home office. And we'll just name it that for the time being. And we're going to make sure we're on the WLAN type there at the top. And click Apply. 
So in here, you know, set this up however you guys want. We'll enable it, obviously. Let's go to the security page here. I am going to do a very simple policy here. So we're going to just do pre-shared key and something simple. And once you get that information all set, just hit apply. And we've got our one WLAN created. We can take a look at it here. Home office is the one I just created. Now, remember I said that the ports on the back of these Office 6 NAPs can be tunneled back to headquarters as well. So let's set that up. In order to do it, we're going to hit Create New again. But this time, instead of setting up a WLAN, we're going to set up a remote LAN. And we'll give it a, a name here. We'll not be very creative today. And we'll just put in remote LAN is what we're going to call it. And this is for those wired ports. We can enable this as well. It's going to go back to the same interface there. Um, by default, this is set up via Mac filtering. So it's going to filter anything you need to create your whitelist. I'm going to take that off just because I want to be able to plug anything in behind those ports and not have to filter on it. So we're taking that off and then we're hitting apply. Now, we could stop here, but... What I want to do is, because I'm using this controller for a couple different things, is I want to create different AP groups. So I want to have my remote LAN and I want to have my home office in their own AP group. So that way I'm only pushing this one SSID down and this remote LAN down to my office extend APs. The other reason why you might want to do this is maybe not all my users need to have this remote LAN. They don't need to plug into the ports in the back of the box. So for these users, you know, I might have two different groups for them. To do this, we're going to go into our AP groups and we're going to add a new group and we're going to call this OEAP group and we're going to hit add. Now we're going to click on this and we need to add in those WLANs that we just created. So Let's add new here, and we're going to add in home office we'll, and add it there. We're going to add a second one, and that's going to be our remote LAN. And we are going to add that one. Okay, so I've got both the home office SSID that's going to be broadcasted over there, and I also have the remote LAN, those ports that are going to be there. To set up the ports on the actual Office 6 AP, we need to go over to Ports and Modules tab. And these are the ports that we want to enable to come across that DTLS connection. So I'm just going to enable one port here, which is going to be LAN port 1. That also has PoE on it on the 1810. And we're going to say the remote LAN is going to be the uh, WLAN or the RLAN that I called remote LAN and we're going to click apply there and one other thing to note too here with the ports and modules this is going to be different depending on the access points that you guys select so like with the 2700 series ap there's a little note in here that says you can actually use the aux port as the lan one interface here and obviously a 2700 does not have four lan interfaces on it so you're kind of going to be locked into only doing things on on the first one here and the it's probably not going to POE on it either if it's the 2700 series AP. Uh, but at this point, we've got the WLANs created, we've got it in an AP group, and we've got our RLAN created and, and the ports created. Next, we're going to set up the actual access point for, for this all to work. So first, we need to map the access point also to this AP group. So we're on the ports modules tab. We're going to go over to the APs tab. And we're going to see our Office Extend AP right here. That's the uh, MAC address of it. So we're going to click that checkbox and we're going to say Add AP. By default, everything goes over to that default group. Um, so if you aren't going to create different AP groups, you can just go into that default group. You can set up your ports, you can set everything up from there. But we'll double check it. We'll go into our OEAP group. We'll see our WLANs are set up. And then we'll see our APs in this group and it actually bounced right now so it's not in here but it would show up uh, right here once it's uh, once it's in there.
So to set up the access points, we're going to head over to wireless and we're going to see our Office Extend AP that we plugged in. Again, I'm using the AP 1810. So we're going to click on that. And the first thing we need to do is we need to change this from local mode to flex connect mode. I'll click on that and we'll apply it. And the AP might reboot, might take a second for this thing to come back online. And then we need to go over to high availability. And in here, we need to put the wireless LAN controller name. You'll see one is what mine's called and the management IP address. So this is, when we plug it in on an internet connection somewhere, this is the address that it's going to be broadcasting out to to connect with and make that DTLS tunnel. If you looked at the CLI of the AP while it's booting up, it's going to have in there your internal IP address, mine being 192.168.128.12. It's going to do a request for that. And the secondary request is actually going to be this address right here. So make sure you have this set up or else it won't work. And we'll click apply there. Next, since we enabled this thing for Flex Connect, we're going to go over to the Flex Connect tab. And down here is where we're going to enable this for it to be a Office Extend access point. And we're just going to say this. And it's going to say, do you want to enable encryption? If I did not have that DTLS license, it would not let me uh, enable encryption on this. So that's why you need to make sure you have that license on here. Click OK. It's going to give you a couple warnings. We're not going to be able to disable rogue detection. That's fine. It's at someone's house. Who knows what else they have going on? Well, their devices are in the neighborhood, so we don't really care too much about that. And we're done. Next, we need to just finish setting up the controller. So in order to do that, head over to our controllers tab here. And we're going to click on interfaces. And on our management interface, whatever interface you have in your DMZ, you're going to click that. You need to scroll and enable NAT address here. And then put in your public IP address that's going to be um, coming back here. So you know, put that in there. Hit apply. And your controller is all set up. So guys, at this point, your AP is basically configured. You could take this thing home, plug it in. And as long as everything is set up correctly, it will make its DTLS tunnel and you will have that RLAN available to you and you will have that, that SSID broadcasting out at your house. I'm going to take you through a couple more things here. I think that are things that you should know about, a couple tweaks here and there. Um, but again, at this point, you are done. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is how to set up the personal SSID for the person if, if you want it to set it up for them. Or you, know, you can have them take it home, plug it in, and they can set it up for themselves. To get into the local GUI of the AP, just grab the IP address of it as it's plugged in, and we'll head over. It's going to say login. Default username is admin admin. That's for the 1800 series, and we'll just go in there like this. First thing you could do when, when you're in here is configure the username and password. And you might want to do this because you may not want all your users coming in here. You might want to set it up for them, and that way you control their username and password here. Um, but you can come in here. I'm not going to walk through all the steps. This is pretty simple to configure. You can set up your SSIDs right here. You can set up your DHCP scope over here, your WAN connection. This is one of the settings I kind of wish they'd lock out. Uh, I really don't want someone that has access to this thing coming in here and playing with this before they they break it and then the AP doesn't call home anymore because they they mess with this IP address here but uh, that's in here for now and you know again some other basic stuff here firewall backup restore you know I'm not gonna take you through everything but that's kind of the gist to this so if you wanted to let's say block all users from um, having access to the local interface there is a way to do it it is a global configuration setting. You know, I kind of wish that, again, this wasn't a global configuration setting, which I can kind of tune it per access point, but that's the way that uh, Cisco wanted to set it up for here. So to get to this option, it's under wireless, global configuration, and then disable local access. And again, global configuration setting, so that's going to disable uh, local access to all of your Office Extend APs. And the next thing I'll show you guys is how to do whitelisting of Office Extend APs. So 
you know, for whatever reason, if you want to throw the MAC address in there and only these Office 610 APs can get through and make a connection, uh, you can do that up at the security tab here. And if you go over to the MAC filtering, this is here where you would throw in the MAC addresses of those Office 610 APs um, that you want to connect. Everything else would just kind of be blacklisted. I'm not going to set this up just because I'm trying to do things as simple as possible, but this is where you do that. So the next thing I'll tell you guys, and this is actually kind of important because it, it got me when I when I originally set this up, is back over to controller and your interfaces. Once we put this one interface into NAT mode, any new access points that I plug in won't associate to the controller. They won't they won't see it. So what you're gonna want to do is create another interface. So you can go up here to new interface name. You know, we'll call it local mode APs, your VLAN tag. And you're going to want to set another port on your controller, let's say port 2, um, and plug that into a different switch, give it a, a new interface, a new network name and everything, IP address. And then any new access points that you need to configure for Office Extend, you'll plug into that network segment, set everything up, um, and then you can unplug the AP, take the AP home, and it'll connect back into that management IP address because that's where the, the NAT is configured at that point. So, you know, if you're just doing this in one big group, you probably don't need to do this step, but if you're going to do it, you know, where I do five or six APs at one time and then 10 APs at another time, you're going to want to have, you're going to need to set up another interface here. So I just took my Office 610 AP that I just finished setting up, plugged it into another internet connection, let it boot up, and if we come to our wireless tab here at the top, we can actually see here's that Office 610 AP that we just set up. Here's the IP address that it's coming in from, and it looks like it's online and everything's good. So we're going to go in, we're going to just double check on this thing here. So if we click on it, we see that it's on. If we go over to the advanced tab, we can actually see the latency that's, that it's coming back at. And give this a little bit of time, this isn't really showing anything yet, but after a couple of minutes you'll actually see the latency that, that's coming across here. And guys, that's it. It works. Uh, I just finished testing it out. No issues on over here. If you have any questions, please post them. Um, hope you guys liked the video. Subscribe to the channel and thanks a lot.